A major announcement today from a Bay Area aeronautics company that says it has built the first true flying car in history. San Mateo-based Aleph says it will soon begin operations out of two small airports in the region, Half Moon Bay and Hollister. The company says it's created a road-legal passenger car that has vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. Aleph has been doing test flights at several different sites, but this is the first time the company will be testing its cars at airports, actually sharing the airspace with conventional aircraft. Let's talk more about it. We'll bring in Jim Duchovny, the CEO of Aleph. Jim, great to have you on. We appreciate the time. Uh, all of it is, is, is fascinating to, to think about here. First, let's talk about the announcement here. What, what is it that you're hoping to learn by doing test flights with your cars at these two local airports? Uh, thanks, Alex. So airports are one of the most complex environments in aviation. And uh, there are takes off, there's landings, there are taxis, there's interaction between all kinds of different aircrafts. So we want to be a good sport. We want to be uh, a good player. So we want to make sure that we integrate well with already existing aviation in one of the most complex uh, environments. Because Aleph car is by design not supposed to use airports, right? It's, it can take off and landing anywhere. But we intentionally want to make sure that we play well with existing infrastructure and with existing aviation. What, what, what kind of classification is, is, is your car going to have in the, in the aircraft sphere here? Uh, it, and will you need to have a pilot's license to, in order to fly it? Right, so there are different models. Uh, the model which you saw videos right now, which you showed, is called Model Zero Ultralight. Model Zero Ultralight has a classification of ultralight, which means it does not need a pilot license, but it has restrictions that it cannot fly at night and it cannot fly over densely populated areas. Uh, the other model which we have is actually heavier, so it has a bigger range, which is Model Zero, and the commercial Model A, which we are planning to start actually manufacturing by the end, start manufacturing by the end of this year and probably beginning of the next year. Okay, so explain how the technology works here. H how does this flying car uh, perform these vertical takeoffs and landings? What's, what's actually going on? Right, so there's three, think about it as three in one. There is a car, there is a rotor craft for vertical takeoff, and there is an uh, airplane mode for flying forward. So for driving, it's a regular driving. There are actually motors inside four wheels. So they do the driving, as you saw, you just showed on the video. Um, then inside there is what is called DEP, Distributed Electric Propulsion, eight independent uh, propeller motor speed controller systems. Uh, they give you the vertical takeoff and landing. And then the car transitions into the biplane mode by utilizing the sides of the car as the wings, and then it flies very efficiently. It can also fly efficiently forward without transitioning to the biplane mode, just in a regular car mode for uh, short distances or in a biplane mode for the longer distances. So the tech actually utilizes the rotor craft, the uh, airplane and the car, and they not conflict, they actually help each other. So it was uh, you and a few of your friends, it sounds like, who all got together about a decade or so ago and, and decided you wanted to build an actual flying car and, and you came up with the initial concept. Why, why is it that you, you feel like this is something that is important for society to have? Yeah, so my co-founder, Konstantin Oleg and Pavel, actually the one who built the car uh, from my crazy idea on the napkin. But um, I lived in Bay Area for close to 30 years, and the traffic at 5 p.m. is nuts here sometimes and mm -hmm. in a lot of areas. Um, and turns out to be that's the only solution, because the whole point why we have a traffic is the width of the road. Because we're trying to put more and more cars every year to the same width of the road. And hence, we have traffic in Bay Area, right? Um, Hyperloop, self-driving cars do not solve the problem because you still do not solve the width of the road. You're still mm -hmm. trying to put more and more cars to the same width of right, the road. Right. So the only solution is just to go up. I was losing the huge amount of time by commuting. I was living in Palo Alto and commuting to San Francisco. Huge amount of time every day. Yeah. And a lot of people in Bay Area lose huge amount of time. And I can tell you, throughout the years, you lose close to a year worth of your right. time by just stuck in traffic. 
Well, but but ultimately, is, is the idea that you, you ultimately will be able to take off and then land wherever you want, or will there be designated places where you take off and land when you talk about trying to get around those huge traffic jams here in the Bay Area? So we assume that initially it's going to be um, only designated areas. Okay. But eventually it's going to be everything except certain areas, right? So we're going to start with only everything is restricted, only certain areas are okay. And then we slowly, incrementally is going to move to everything is okay except the restricted areas. Um, again, it depends on the classification because for ultralight it's one thing, for light spot aircraft it's another. Um, flying car does not exist as a classification anywhere. Right. right. All right. So in terms of, of what happens from here, when do you expect to begin production on any of the models of, of your flying cars here? When, when would people be able to buy them? It sounds like you can pre-order them, but when will they be available? Right. So we still on track as of today to start production of the first one, either by the end of 25 or very beginning of 26. Hmm. Um, after that, it all depends on how quickly we can scale. But so far, we're on track for those specific dates. Yeah, and a three hundred thousand dollar price tag uh, that we should we should point out for folks. I mean, that obviously is a little steep for for a lot of folks here. But uh, do you think the price? How long will it take? I should say for the price to be a little bit more reasonable for the average person. Right. So the reason I mean I cannot afford it myself. So <laughs> the reason the reason the price is high because. It, because it costs us a lot to make one. I mean, we're making it by hand in San Mateo. You can imagine how much it costs. Mm -hmm. um, as the volume increases and as um, the factor optimization improves, we can eventually, and this is where I, I'm getting all, all the time misquoted, eventually, in a long time from now, when, what for a big volume, we can get price down under $30,000. Oh, wow. The reason for it, because the car is simpler this Aleph car, which you just showed, is simpler than Ford Focus, Toyota Corolla, or other cars. But in order to get to that price, we need to get to the volume and optimize manufacturing. Yeah, there's certainly, uh, certainly a long way to go, but I know this is an important milestone for you to begin testing at actual airports here in the Bay Area. So I appreciate you coming on to, to talk about uh, what you've accomplished so far and, and what may be coming next. Jim Dukovny, the CEO of Aleph. Appreciate the conversation. Good to see you. Thank you, Alex.